بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على خير خلقه سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه جمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته <تصفيق> Um, you know, um, in terms of the uh, books of uh, different mashaykh of tariqah, uh, I would call the books and these type of risalat as the uh, manuals as well as the mutun that we have in different subjects. For example, do you know that we have matan in aqidah called aqidah tuhawiyya? Okay, or another matan, um, uh, 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 for example, Aqaid Nasafiya, which is presenting the Maturidi Aqidah, or, uh, uh, for example, Jawhara, which is presenting the, uh, for example, um, um, Ashari Aqidah, or Al Wasitiya, okay, which is presenting the Salafi Aqidah, okay. So, in uh, the Tasawwuf also, we do have a manuals. And what is the manual's text, Mudun? It is very summarized, very summarized, you can say, um, um, uh, version of all of the subject. Okay? So the brothers, for example, who did study the fiqh, for example, uh, Mukhtasar al-Quduri, they know that this summarized version of all of the Hanafi uh, fiqh, you can say, Masail. Okay, so on the same way we do have the manuals in the subject called Tasawwuf. Okay, and during the spiritual experiences you will be stuck in, in some certain corners in which the uh, path will be going into two d directions. Okay, so then you just look into the manual and then you find out that you have to take the right turn in here. And the next time when there will be two, again, uh, um, uh, ways, two uh, roads, okay, coming out, uh, out of your road, so then you will be taking the left um, turn. And all of that is explained in here. Okay, so that's why, that's why uh, our, our understanding of this Risale is going to be very, very shallow. Because this is uh, mainly the knowledge that uh, is understood by experiencing, not by learning and studying. Okay? But the brothers, if we have some of the awliya or some of the murid sitting with us here, when I will be reading and translating, they will understand totally different meaning to what we are understanding. Okay? <clears throat> so that is one thing. And the second thing, uh, um, the book that we are going to learn today is very very strange okay and it is the uh, way of the mashayikh of the past to uh, write it in the way in which only the people of their own field would understand okay and it is misafaric explanation of the real and you can say natural things that will be happening during during the uh, journey okay and I I am uh, actually uh, one of those who say that this way is the best way. Because it will keep the knowledge only for the people of the knowledge. Now, for example, now just go to the uh, internet and you will find people, kids, debating about very, very deep philosophical, theological issues. Why? Because some of the authors has written the aqidah or fiqhi books in very um, basic language, you know, so everyone can understand it. We don't need that language. Okay? The knowledge has to be written in very complicated language, so only the people of the highest concern, they would understand it. Because we don't want to give the knowledge to the people who are not the people of the knowledge. Okay, do you remember uh, the hadith in which Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu says, أَخْوَفُ مَا أَخَافُ عَلَى هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ أَنْ يُفْتَحَ عَلَيْهَا الْكِتَابِ فَيَنْظُرَ فِيهَا كُلَّ بَرٍ وَفَاجِرٍ The most scary thing that I'm afraid for this nation is the book will be opened to this nation, means knowledge will be very accessible to this, uh, to this nation. So then each single person will be looking into it. Bar wal fajr, obedient and disobedient. So the obedient people, they know how to use it. 
But the disobedience, go into the uh, uh, YouTube, you will see the debates, you know. As soon as you will see the faces, you will understand that it's not the people of knowledge. But it's one of the disobedience for whom knowledge was accessible. Now they just took it and then now they're debating and criticizing the people. Okay. And Isa ibn Maryam السلام, said once, to give the knowledge to someone who is not the man of knowledge, it is the same as to put on the necklace, very expensive necklace with a diamond stone, on the neck of the pigs. Okay, so I say what Imam Ghazali radiallahu anhu has did in here, I say may Allah bless you Imam. How beautiful a thing that you did. Because you did keep the knowledge for its own people. Now, inshallah, you will see um, that Imam Ghazali will be speaking about the birds, about animals, and they're going to some journey. Okay, so it is the same as, um, uh, do you remember the, the movie where we, uh, we used to watch when we used to be kids? Um, uh, like uh, the Kingdom of Oz, isn't it? Sorry? Yeah, yeah, so it's like a group of animals going to some king. Uh, am I right? So it's the book like that, you know. So if some disobedient will, would look into it, or the person who doesn't, uh, con who is not uh, concerned about the heart and spirituality, he will say it's just one of the hanky-panky books, you know. I, I say, alhamdulillah, that you are saying it, because you are not the man of this uh, knowledge. But when the man of this knowledge will pick up this book, he will say, uh, Oh, Imam, thank you very much. You did answer all of my questions. Now I'm practicing it. Okay? Alhamdulillah also, I say, uh, I'm from Uzbekistan and I'm really happy to be from Uzbekistan because all of my grandfathers, they did use the um, uh, way of Imam Ghazali. So all of the books that is written, Hanafi books or even the Maturi the Aqidah books, which is written in Mawran, Nahar, Bukhara, Samarkand, Kharazm, Shash, Fargana, all of these cities, is very locked. Okay, so the Ibara is Mu'aqqada, means the text and the sentences is very locked, it's impossible to understand. For example, Imam Nasafi says, not me, but the real one, okay, says, um, says, al um, hajj uh, hat do, do I have any Arabic speakers in here? Anyone who understands Arabic? Did you study Arabic language? Can you translate al hajj ranhat? Al-Hajj is Hajj. Ranhat. What's the Ranhat? Who knows, you know? Okay, Ranna in Arabic, maybe you can say Ranna ringing. Hat to put down something. So, bell is ringing and you have to hurry up to put, uh, put down something. Okay? But that's not what Imam Nasafi says. He says, uh, Al-Hajj Ranhat means Ra is Rami. First, in the Hajj, the order. In the Yom uh, Nahar, um, what you have to do, Ranhat. Ra means Rami, stoning. Nun is Nahar, slaughtering. Ha is Halq, shaving. And Ta is Tawaf. Okay, I say that what we need. Because if some person, do you know the, uh, the brother who is into making takfir of a people, if he will pick up the book of uh, Imam Nasafi, he will say, Al uh, Hajj Ranhat. He will say, it's the book of the jinnat, you know. I say, alhamdulillah, because you're not the man of knowledge, so don't touch it. Okay? But the, mainly, the main uh, Arabic way of writing the books is very simplified texts. Okay? So I say, what, uh, Imam, uh, what uh, Umar anhu, uh, was uh, afraid of, it's applicable on the books of Arabian authors mainly. Beca because their language is so understandable, so each single obedient and disobedient easily can access the knowledge through their books. Now book is opened and everyone is looking into it and debating. Okay, so it's very easily you can find two people, you know, arguing and debating in, about very deep philosophical, theological issues about the attributes of God. But it's very possible that no any of them today prayed Salat al-Fajr. It's very possible. Do you understand what I mean? Why? Because the people of the heart, the people of the knowledge, they never debate. 
Do you understand? They may have discussion, but as soon as discussion will be converted into the debate, they just stop speaking. Okay? So, we are really blessed to get the book Risala to Tayr, which is, um, I would say, locked language. It's only the people of its own knowledge, its uh, field, will understand it. Okay, but the people who are about debating and criticizing people and insulting the people, they will just look into it saying, oh, it's just hanky-panky, you know, it's a Hollywood story of Oz. I say, alhamdulillah, that you're not understanding it because it's not your thing. Just go and play with your own Osmos thing, okay? That's another thing. And the third thing is um, about the, um, con the, the content of the, uh, of the Risala to Tayr. <coughs> you know, we do have many, many ways which is leading the person to God. Okay? I'm talking about the real one. But the non-real one, maybe it's double of that real ones. Okay? So non-real one. Now, just go and uh, bomb somewhere. Why? Because you did kill the disbelievers. So that will take you to paradise. Okay? So that's one understanding. Or another understanding, go and criticize and insult the people of some certain groups. Why? Because their grandfathers insulted God or insulted the Prophet or insulted said Aisha, you know? That is another fake way. That is another fake way. Okay? But the the true path which is leading the people to God is we call it Tasawuf and nothing else leads the people towards God. Okay? And there are many, many ways. But all of them will come back to three or four main uh, directions okay uh, so now I would uh, I would give you uh, only two things because the uh, physically you cannot go towards God am I right except if you are presenting some certain group so then physically you can be closer and further am I right so for example the person who lives in the second floor, he's closer to God than the person who lives in the first floor. So that's their uh, uh, silly understanding. Okay, but because Rasulullah said, "Aqrabu ma yakunu al-abdu min Rabbihi wa huwa sajid." The most closest person will be to God is when he's making sajda. So if your understanding would be correct, Allah uh, Rasulullah would say, "When you are standing," because then you are closer to Him. You know. In your understanding, okay? Anyway, so, there is no such a thing which called physical journey towards God. Okay, but that is spiritual journey. Again, spiritual journey doesn't mean in distance. Okay, even if you'll cross billions of uh, uh, kilometers, you're not going to be closer to God. Because that distance doesn't exist for God. Okay, but Allah did make it for us. So, I say the journey that could be uh, between a human being and God. That is the spiritual uh, journey, uh, and the gate of the journey is your heart. Okay, you will enter the journey through your heart. Okay, and then uh, uh, our uh, mashayikh, Sufi mashayikh, they have taken two stands. One says, um, one says, uh, invite God, invite God to your heart. But then how? One said. First, purify your heart first. Okay, so can you imagine? It's just example. Walillahi al Allah. Nothing is comparable to God. Can you imagine that you are inviting a king, noble king, into your house? Isn't it that first you will tie up your house and put in some beautiful perfumes? So when he comes, when he comes, you will not be ashamed. Okay, so the first group of scholars said you have to clean up your house and you have to beautify and decorate your heart. Then God will be invited into that. Okay? The second uh, uh, type of uh, uh, scholars said it's other way around. Just invite God into your heart and when he comes, he will just burn off all of the dirt and filth in your heart. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الملوك إذا دخلوا قرية أفسدوها وجعلوا أعزة أهلها أذلة وكذلك يفعلون means whenever kings enter the village or town they will destroy that town and they will make the most respectable things in there the most respectable people in there to be the most hated ones in there 
Okay, means when God, when God comes here, you love backbiting. When God comes, he will make you to hate backbiting. You are into sleeping in Salat al-Fajr, you cannot wake up. Okay, and when God will be invited, he will make that to be most hated to you. You are falling into some certain fields, some sins, you know. So when Allah comes there, Allah will make it to be the worst thing for you. Because Allah is so jealous, you know. Okay, and Allah has got the high level, high degree jealousy. So he, if you love something with him, Allah is so jealous that he will just finish it off. So that is the philosophy of the second type of a people. So, Imam Ghazali is the man of the first type of a people. Imam Ghazali, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jailani, all of them are representing the first type. Clean up your heart first, then invite God there. Okay, and then uh, Abu Sa'id ibn Abi al-Khair, as well as Maulana Rumi, as well as uh, Shah Naqshband, Khuja Ubaidullah Ahrar al-Wali, as well as Najmuddin Kubra, that people are the people of the second stand. Okay, and I'm not, uh, I'm just follower, so I'm the follower of the second stand. I say human being is so weak on his own. Okay, uh, Maulana Rumi gives an example, gives an example of comparing these two ways that leading towards God. So he says, he says, you just imagine that your heart is like big garden, big yard that you have to convert into the garden. That big yard is full of different cactuses, different uh, grasses, which is confusing you to plant the roses and apples, you know. And there are a lot of rocks. So first, what do you have to do? You have to clean it up according to the first stand. And after that, you can uh, grass, you can plant the beautiful garden in there. So then he says, you will carry on cleaning it. You will start from here. And when you will reach at the other end, if you will just look back, you will find that grasses, filthy grasses grown up again. Then you will come back doing again and again and again. And the life of some of us may just end. But yet he will be still working in that garden, you know. Not yet did clean up. Okay. But then he says, but what about the second way? He says, he says it is the way you have a fuel in your hand, <coughs> petrol. You will just throw it on all of that grass and just you will burn it. And next day you can plant the garden. Okay. So that is the second way. So... Man, mu'min, is weak in, his, in himself. وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفًا Human being has been created as a weak creature. So you will be unable to fight all of these diseases. Okay? So I know a brothers, I know a brothers who, are in the who are following the first type of uh, um, uh, tariqah and their first ever, their first ever mujahada is to fulfill, to fulfill um, five times a day. Even if they will miss it one day with no excuse, they have to repeat 40 days, you know. 40 days. I know people who spent 10 years in the first uh, way of tariqah, and yet they are struggling to pray five times a day on its own time, you know. So it is so, so difficult. Okay. So man is weak by himself. And he will be strong by God. So you will be unable to purify yourself. So let God do it for you. Okay. And then how you will let him to do it. You have to invite him. And how? Follow its own procedures. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so it's not that. For example. If you are willing to invite. For example. Very noble person. It's not that. You will just pick up your mobile phone. Just giving him call. And just. Waiting for him. It's not that. But there are some certain procedures. Okay. And also now, unfortunately, we do have um, a different type of journey. It is a very new group. And they're not into the journey, but they're more into the uh, knowledge. Okay. And then they say, um, Rasulullah did explain everything. Okay. And if you want to be uh, purer and closer to God, then practice the sunnah. If you just go to the um, hadith, um, thank you very much. 
there are something about million it is a number there are something about million of a hadith okay and sunnas are so much and prohibitions and commands of rasulullah so many of them you know and which how to start first you know they say just pick up and just start practicing i say they look like a person who has got just full container of bricks and they need they need to build a building so then they will just start putting everything but each single brick everywhere you know and when they will finish off the container and if they will just look back to the building there is nothing there is no proper building but bricks two of them here three of them there you know and four of them there you know but there is no proper building and proof of that is just look to the mashaykh of them still arrogant still insulting the people you know still angry means the building was not proper and look at our mashaykh who are our mashaykh imam ghazali you know who are our mashaykh abul qadir jah who are our mashaykh al habib al ajami okay who are our mashaykh uh, abu sa'id ibn abi al khair al mihani okay abu sa'id ibn abi al khair al mihani once was just uh, walking with his uh, murids in one of the uh, streets of um, Asbahan. okay and th wh what happened so uh, there was in that street there was a house of very disobedient people very wealthy man and each single day he would bring women singers you know the slaves in that time she slaves they would be for hiring singers and they would do all sorts of things you know okay so exactly in that day Imam, Imam Abu Sa'id ibn Abi al-Khair was working with his murids so one of his murids said so they did hear the music and the, uh, the uh, voice of the uh, songs that uh, ladies were singing so then one of the murids said oh Imam Sab actually they are hurting us with these um, uh, voices please can you just uh, curse them so Allah let Allah take them uh, away from us Okay, so then Abu Sa'id ibn Abi al-Khair al-Mihani radiallahu anhu said, Ya Allah, as you made them happy in this dunya, so make them uh, happy hereafter. I said, that is our mashayikh, you know. Means, we have the fruit of our building, you know. We see the fruit of our, show me the fruit of your building. Means, if you, uh, unable means your way of building is incorrect. So, come and join us. We will take you to the proper building structure. I can give you millions of our fruits and you cannot give me even one, you know. So the example that you will give, just pick up his book, just full of uh, arrogance and full of insulting the people, you know. Full of insulting the greatest imams of Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah. Abu Hanifa has been cursed by them, okay. Um, Imam Ghazali has been cursed. So who left? Who left? Means your way of building is incorrect. Or otherwise you would be able to give me at least one example. Okay, so we did have um, uh, 13 centuries in Islam. And in each single century, I'm ready to name hundreds of our fruits, you know. And they will be the heads of Islam, you know. And you're unable to give me only one throughout th 30, 13 centuries. Means there is only one person in paradise, <laughs> according to you. But according to me, more than half of paradise is us. And Rasulullah backs up one of us, and everyone knows whom Rasulullah did back up. Rasulullah said, Oh people, do you like that one third will be you? Okay. Oh Muslims, do you like that one third will be our nation, Muslims? Sahaba were very happy. They said, Yes, Ya Rasulullah. Okay. Then Rasulullah said, But do you like that you will be half of the, of the paradise? It's, it's, it's even more, you know. So then Rasulullah said that, I hope that Allah will make most, the majority part of uh, paradise to be my ummah. If you will go ex to accept your understanding, so according to your understanding, okay, one out of million is going to be Muslims, and the rest is from the previous nations. So, it is exactly opposing what Rasulullah said. But if you will go with my understanding, so then we'll hit exactly what Rasulullah did say. Okay? You know, 
uh, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, when he was um, um, uh, <coughs> predicting about the last messenger, so he said, by their fruits you will recognize them. By their fruits you will recognize them. So in our uh, century we have many, many people, okay, those Sufis and those who are opposing the Sufis. So I say, by their fruits you will recognize them. Okay, <coughs> anyway. Risalatu <laughs> Tayr. Imam Ghazali radiallahu anhu is a very famous person. Okay, and there is no need um, uh, to mention his biography again because um, his biography uh, for most of us even more known than our own biography. Okay, Imam Ghazali hujjatul Islam radiallahu anhu wa uh, Again, as I did say, the way of Imam Ghazali is the way of mujahada, purifying your heart so then king could be invited okay but the way of so it is the same way of uh, Sheikh Abdul Qadir al Jailani radiallahu anhu um, uh, and uh, it is the main way of the Shadilis also uh, Sheikh al Islam al Hassan al Shadili radiallahu anhu and the way of uh, Kubrawis and Naqshbandis is the way of um, uh, being weak by your own and being strong by God okay so that is the way <coughs> Zikr al -anqa. anqa is actually myth uh, bird. It is phoenix, as far as I remember. And it's uh, uh, people used to just use this um, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, misophoric uh, titles to express the noble king. Okay, so for example, unicorn, as well as the phoenix, as well as that type of uh, animals, just to mean that, for example, let's suppose that um, if I would be literature in the time of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, and if I would write the history of the time of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, then I would call Umar ibn Abdul Aziz as phoenix, or as unicorn. Okay, but most of the time, unicorn means it is noble scholar, wise, noble scholar man. But Phoenix will ma mean noble just king. Okay? Um, uh, and, the, for example, lion in that type of stories will mean just king, but not noble. But just king. Why is just king? But Anqa, the Phoenix, will mean uh, just noble king. Okay? So try to understand uh, the misophoric use of the uh, uh, authors. <clears throat> اجتمعت أصناف الطيور قال المصنف رضي الله عنه وأرضاه ورحمه ورحمنا معه اجتمعت أصناف الطيور على اختلاف أنواعها وتباين طباعها وزعمت أنه لا بد لهم من ملك once upon a time different types of animals different types of uh, birds they came together and they have different types and different uh, uh, characters. Okay, some of them are eating a flesh, uh, a live flesh, and some of them eating dead flesh, dead meat. Some of them eating grass. Some of them are eating roses. So it is uh, the uh, birds of different types. In here, birds mean people. So crow will be uh, presenting the person who backbites and slanders a lot. Okay, and eagle will mean not unjust king or unjust prince okay and all will mean a uh, wise uh, old person okay so it is big number of the birds they came together and then they actually um, uh, came to agreement that they cannot without a king you know it is the it is the way how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did create us that we naturally feel that some part of our heart is empty all the time and only the great leader can fill it. And those people who will not find that leader, they will be going to different wrong things to make them to be their leaders. For example, the singers. Okay, so for example, why? people are into, uh, for example, making someone as their favorite people. What do they call the favorite person in English? No, f idol. idol. No, for example, if you enter his uh, room, it will be his pictures always, and he will be imitating him, you know. It's idol. 
Idol? Sorry? Role model? Celebrities. 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 Okay, so um, it is our, that's how Allah created us. Okay, so if we do not put the right leader in our, that corner of our heart, we will try to fill it by wrong and false things, you know. That's how we are created. Each single person is like that. Okay, even the most arrogant person will have that need in himself. So he needs some guide. He needs some leader in his life. Okay, so all of the, um, the birds came together and then actually they agreed that actually they are missing some leader in their life. واتفقوا على أنه لا يصلح لهذا الشأن إلا العنقاء. But then they did agree that no one is capable to take care of this burden of the of this duty except the phoenix. You know, the leader. If you remember Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, how did He describe the leader? He said. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله زاده عليكم إن الله زاد إن الله زاده عليكم في العلم والجسم بسطة. Okay, do you remember the story of Talut and Jalut? Okay, and then Allah سبحانه وتعالى has chosen the Talut to be the king leader to lead the battle between the good and evil between بنو إسرائيل and the Palestinians. Do you remember? Yeah, and then. Uh, the prophet of that time said that this battle will not happen unless you will get your king. And then who was the king? The wealthy people, they were expecting that it's them who is going to be king. Okay, but then Allah has chosen one of the, um, uh, in one of the Israelites, it said that he used to be slave actually. But he was very uh, knowledgeable as well as very uh, good, uh, uh, you can say, strong uh, belt uh, uh, person. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said on the uh, tongue of that prophet of the time that uh, Allah has chosen him to be king above you because Allah has made him to be in the knowledge as well as the building, I mean the body, wider than you. Okay, you know it is our natural need in our heart. Okay, so most of the time if I will narrate some story about some great king. Straight away you will think of very wise, very knowledgeable, as well as very brave and very strong. Personality will come to your mind. Okay. So it is very strange. Because normally, normally, a person, if he will be ignorant but very strong, so then he cannot lead the, uh, you can say, um, intelligence. Am I right? The academicals. But if he will be very academical, but very um, uh, covered, okay, so then the people of, uh, do you know, the crime, uh, crime makers, you know, crime people, they will not consider him as their leader, am I right? So it should be someone who will be above everyone, okay, in each single field or in most of the fields. Okay, so for example, can you just go back to revise the biography of the prophets and on top of them the biography of Rasulullah So he's the most knowledgeable, he's the most bravest and he's the most generous and he's the most strongest. Okay, for example, in the very beginning stage of the mission, some of the, um, uh, I would say maybe, uh, Mike Tyson of that age, okay, came to Rasulullah so he was wrestling, you know. That's what he was known with. And he said, um, so Rasulullah started giving him a message. Okay, saying, let's uh, come to Islam because Allah is one, etc. And then that person said, uh, so each single person, each single prophet should have a miracle. Do you have any? Rasulullah said, okay, what do you want? So he said, we will wrestle. If you will beat me, then I will follow you. Rasulullah said, deal. They started wrestling. So Rasulullah easily just put him and then put him on his back. So he said just, it was just accident. They did it again and again, you know. Each time Rasulullah would put him on his back, you know. And then at that, that person inside he did admit. Okay. They did deny it verbally, but inside they are very, very accepting it, you know, admitting it. So at the end he says, oh, you know, today I haven't eaten my breakfast very well. So that's why. 
So Rasulullah is the most strongest one and the most so that's how Rasulullah has been the most you can say um, effective uh, leader. Okay, because he was above everyone on their own field. Okay, so the poets came to challenge him and Rasulullah beside Quran, their speech, you know. It was much more delicious than what they said, you know. Once um, one of the Yemeni poets came, okay, um, so when uh, he came, uh, they said, so he was very famous uh, poet, and then when he came, uh, Abu Jahl actually did say to him, and Walid ibn Uqba, and other, um, uh, uh, other um, uh, uh, kuffar in that time, and Walid ibn Uqba became Muslim afterward. Anyway, so what did he say? He said, um, uh, we have some person, poet, and he is actually hypnotizing everyone with his poems, you know, causing magician, you know. So be careful. Do not listen to him because his poems are very magic. Okay, so he did put, do you know the uh, candle of the, uh, what do they call the candle of the, the honey? Because that's the most uh, uh, protecting, uh, blocking the, the voices. So that he used to do it in there while he used to be uh, in Mecca. But then once he said, look, why do I have to follow the people when I am wise enough because I'm quote old senior person and as well as I'm poet. So I do distinguish the poem with from different things, you know. So then he went. He said, let me just listen to him. What does he say? Okay. So then when he went, when he went, um, uh, he said, Ya Abul Qasim, um, I am poet and as well as I am actually a quite wise man and I have been told that you are creating problems by your magic. So do you want me, do you want me to um, make some dam on you. Okay, so maybe if he would be now, he would beat me up on Ummah channel. So he would be the black magician Maulana, you know. So then Rasulullah, when he did complete his work, so Rasulullah did, I went ahead, did you finish? Are you done? Khatam do you want me to say? So he said, now go ahead and say. So then Rasulullah recited the first page of Surah Al-Fussilat. Hamim. Okay, uh, do you know the, um, the first page? It is the page in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the um, uh, status of the revelation, then the status of the kuffar, and then the status of how he created heavens and earth. So when he said, so he said, please can you repeat it? So Rasulullah repeated. So then he said, I'm the expert of the poem, but I haven't heard any I haven't ever heard anything which is so delicious, which is test could be known in your heart, okay, further than your tongue. Okay, so that's one story. And another story, do you remember the father of Khalid ibn Walid? Okay, Walid ibn al mughira Okay, so once he came to Rasulullah wasalam, Okay, then he said, actually, he started giving him um, uh, his own, you can say, um, uh, 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 da'wah, saying, let's uh, go back to worship our, whatever our grandfathers used. So then after that, Rasulullah wasalam, did say only the kalimatul hamd. Um, uh, uh, Okay, Alhamdulillah, Nahmaduhu, wa Nasta'inuhu, wa Nu'minu bihi, wa Natawakkalu alayhi. Till the end of whatever Rasulullah did mention. Okay, so then Walid ibn al-Mughira came back, okay, and he was actually drunk. So Abu Jahl, straight away, when he saw Walid ibn al-Mughira, he said, Oh people, Walid came back different. Now he's different to how he left us. Okay, and that was the effect of uh, the speech of Rasulullah so poets couldn't challenge him. And that wrestling uh, man who didn't have a good breakfast of qima and uh, 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 biryani, so he couldn't challenge him, you know. So who could challenge? So that's how the best leaders will be. Okay, so the best leader will be if he's chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah will prepare him in terms of knowledge-wise as well as the building in terms of his body. Okay, so Allah, as it's mentioned, fil ilmi wal jismi basta. Knowledge as well as the body. He's wider than all of you people. Okay, so that's why uh, we can make it maybe more relevant to our time. Let's suppose that now 
Hizb uh, al-Tahrir brothers are looking for the Khalifa. I think, I say, it's not workable, brothers. Look, theological debate, let's put it aside. But I'm ready for the discussion to uh, to prove the point of Ahlus Nol Jama'ah anyway. But then, if there will be Khalifa, so then it will be other HT. No one will accept him. No Salafis, no Sufis, no Ikhwanis. Or it will be one of the Salafis from Najid. HT will not accept, as well as the Sufis also. Ikhwanis also will not accept. Or it will be one of the Sufis. Will be rejected by Salafis and the HT and the Ikhwanis also. So then, who is capable to be Khalifa in our time? Okay? And by the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Imam Mahdi will come, he will be above all of them. So everyone will say, yes, you are the one. Okay, so that's how it works. So uh, basically all of the birds came together and then after the discussion they said, we need a leader. Without leader we cannot go. You know, you cannot cross your um, uh, journey towards God on your own. You need a guide. But the guide should be someone who did cross that streets and th that hills and forests all, uh, uh, always by himself. Okay, because the person who is away from God, he cannot take you to God because he is away from him. So if he would, if he would be able to take you, he would be there by himself, you know. Okay, so it is the same as now you are driving to London, you need a guide or otherwise if you will pick up someone who is like you, so both of you will be misguided, you know. So it should be some person who actually did reach God already, so only him can lead you. Because so many mustahabbat and so many sunnas, but which one is the proper to lead us to God quicker? Okay, so is it miswak or is it praying tahajjud or is it re reading Quran a lot or is it tasbih? W what is the thing that I should do to, to be close to God? Okay, so it is the same as you have a lot of spare parts of a car. Okay? And the expert will know what to do first. Okay? So, but you could be maybe combining all of these spare parts, but you may spend a year, but car is not yet ready. But expert will spend only one month, and then you can drive your car. Is it the time for uh, namaz? Is it? Half an hour. Because uh, people are coughing, so maybe we're confusing them. Please, can, can you have a look? Can you have a look? Four or five people. Four or five people. Okay, so is it okay if we can just switch off the microphone? That's fine. <coughs> okay, so <coughs> it should be a person who already has been there. Okay, and it is the person who knows. For example, now. Just my question, please. My question. Uh, someone came to Rasulullah okay, complaining about his arrogance. About his arrogance. Rasulullah gave him three remedies. One is, one is um, riding a donkey. And second is milking a sheep. Third is in one narration it says wiping over the head of the orphans and in different narration it says um, uh, wearing the stitched clothes do you know the holes in the clothes and then stitched ones okay why Rasulullah didn't order him to pray tahajjud why Rasulullah didn't order him to pray five times a day in the masjid or uh, uh, studying Quran studying fiqh because it is good deeds but each illness has got its own cure Okay, so tasawuf, tasawuf is nothing but leading you to God. Okay, someone came to Mashrab. Mashrab is one of the Naqshbandi Mashayikh. Okay, from Uzbekistan. He passed away about three, four hundred years ago. So he came, uh, someone came to him. Okay, one of the wazir, one of the uh, ministers. And then he said, uh, Oh, Sheikh, I love you and I want to be wali. Please help me. I want to be man of God. I want to be pious man of God. So then Mashrib just looks at him and then he said, okay, here is the instruction, but 
Are you sure that you are able to do it? That minister said, Inshallah, I will do it. Okay, do you know, normally wealthy people, they will test everything in this dunya, and they will understand that nothing is enjoyable. But the thing that their heart is thirsty for is different. Wealth cannot buy it. Money cannot buy it. So he's, he was one of them. And then he found the real doctor, but not the charlatan that we have in our time. Okay? So then doctor said, Mashrab said, in that case, do as following. I want you to make tawaf, means going around, of the central market of the city in which you are minister in. Okay? But making your slave to be riding your, a donkey, and then you are holding the donkey's tail, but wearing your own clothes. Okay, and then your uh, slave should shout that, give away to the minister. Okay, five times a day, seven rounds. Well, some of the brothers would say it is shirk. Why? Because tawaf around the uh, Kaaba is only, you know, but I would say, I'm sorry, you will not reach never. Okay. So then, he said, and I don't want to see your face for the next 40 days. Okay, and then uh, Mashrab went to his journey. He was going to perform Hajj. Okay. Sorry? Um, no, because we... Okay. Um... <coughs> Um, I'm sorry, I need to just repeat the story from the beginning. Just, just, to, uh, just to prove that we need a guide. Because there are so many beautiful, rewardable practicing. But not each single practicing will lead each single person, you know. Because the disease of each of us is different. Maybe my illness is wine. Your illness is women. His illness is food. Someone else's illness is something else, you know. So we need specific treatments for each single person. Okay, so... Uh, as I said, some uh, minister came, uh, Mashrab was in his journey towards uh, Mecca to perform Hajj, and in one of the Iranian cities, someone came, minister came, saying, Oh, um, Imam, I love you a lot, and I want you to make me, convert me into the Wali. Okay, so then actually, uh, Mashrab just looked at him for a short while, and then he said, I do have remedy for you, but... I'm afraid that you're unable to do it. You know, um, most of the mashayikh that I met, they test the will of the murid in the beginning. Some of the mashayikh of us used to give away a money, you know. Anyone would come to them looking for the knowledge, he would say, why do you need the knowledge? Do you want me to give you money? And then he would realistically give a money. Okay, and only the person with real will would say, I don't need the money, but please teach me. And then he would test him in the time. He would say, okay, I will. Next day he would say, I will. I will. And that how for about a year. And after a year he would start teaching. And only few people, only few people would stand with him. And he had only two or three n real students, you know, and he didn't have anyone else. So then he said, Mashrab said, I can't, I, I, I have the remedy, but I'm afraid that you will be unable to bear it. So that um, uh, minister said, well, I'm looking for it for a long time, so please teach me, I'm ready for it. So then he said, okay, I want you to go and to go around of your market of the city in which you are minister, okay, f seven times, seven rounds, five times a day. And uh, on the way that your slave should be riding a donkey, but you are holding the tail of the donkey, wearing your own clothes, and then your uh, slave shouting your name, saying, give away for the wazir sab. Okay, and then Mashrab said, I don't want to see your face for the next 40 days. And then he went to Umrah, to the Hajj, and then the person... Uh, the person uh, spent 40 days by doing the instruction, implementing, performing the instruction that Mashrab gave him. The narrator says the next they met each other, that person, minister, was in the, in the, uh, in the place performing tawaf. 
So he did arrive Mecca before Mashrab reached. Okay. So because the case of Mashrab, it was everything was there. He was just. He was very generous, helping the poor people, praying tahajjud, making a lot of duas. But only one thing was holding that minister back. That is his arrogance. Okay? Um, selfishness in terms of loving their name, you know, because that's the, normally the, the illness of the um, rich people, am I right? Okay, the arrogance, and when they would go outside, they would be uh, with their uh, slaves and servants, you know, and uh, in all of that glory, they would be walking gloriously, you know. So when Mashrab looked at him, he checked, tested each single thing in him, and he couldn't find any defect except arrogance. So the arrogance, when arrogance let him, straight away he started flying towards God. Okay. And 40 days is enough to make some beautiful attribute to be your own attribute. First day you will be struggling, imitating, to look gentle. Next day it will be easier, third day even easier, easier, and that's how within 40 days it becomes your own uh, natural way of being, natural habit. 40 days is enough. So that was the order of Mashrab. Okay, so that's why Rasulullah has given three remedies to that person who wanted to fight about his arrogance. Okay, and then someone else came to Rasulullah saying, Ya Rasulullah, I am... I find my heart very solid, like a rock. Okay, so Rasulullah gave him three remedies again. One of them, again, as I mentioned, wiping over the head of poor kids, as well as the orphans. And the second is to read Quran more, and third is tahajjud. My question, why Rasulullah didn't order him to do tasbih, or why Rasulullah didn't order him, for example, uh, to fast, why Rasulullah didn't order him to pray five times a day in the masjid? There are so many other rewardable things, but specifically Rasulullah has chosen these three things, you know. We say the disease of the heart is the same as the disease of the body. So not each single remedy is curable for each single disease of the body. Okay? So I say the people... The doctors of the heart is the Sufis. Those who did experiment it on themselves and had an experience. But what about those who study Radha Salihin, Sahih al-Bukhari, and maybe these, that, Aqidah books? You can go to ask them, is this hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari? Okay, is this the position of Abu Hanifa? Is this the uh, position of them, you know? That's what the expertise is. But in terms of, take me to God, it's not their field. They're not with God. Okay, they could be the greatest Satan worshippers, you know. Well, they could be the greatest egoist or ego worshipper people. So, if you want to go to God, then you need a leader. So here are the birds sitting, and we understood that um, we need a leader. Okay, who will take us in our journey safely till we reach our destination. And then we agreed that our leader should be very brave. Why? Because the journey is very long and it's very scary. In the forest there are lions, lepers, irbises, raccoons, okay, gorillas, so many things on the, on the way, you know. As well as it should be very strong because some of us may fall ill, so he needs to carry us, you know. As well as it should be very generous because some of us may not have enough money, we'll finish off our money, but yet we need a food. So he will maintain us you know so as well as it should be very knowledgeable bird because the way is so many zigzags there so many turns right and left so he should be aware about all of them and he should know where to go okay as well as your tom tom will not help us it should be the tom tom of the heart okay the person with an experience so they came to conclusion that no one is capable for it except the phoenix. Okay. Inshallah we'll have short break and after salat inshallah we'll carry on. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. 
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillah. Salatu ve selamu ala Resulillah. <coughs> um, uh, just to uh, uh, get back to the uh, to the book. So a uh, couple of words so before we can just hit up to fall into the same mood in which we left the book uh, before the break. Um, you know, um, in terms of um, understanding this book, there is another book uh, written by Imam Ghazali himself, okay, in which he has spoken in our language, in our language, um, to explain what he means in there. But there, is, there are some certain, I would say, professional secrets hasn't been disclosed in the second book, which is the translation of the same book into our language. So the secrets are still remaining in this book, in this one. Okay, but the translation is for the very uh, beginners or even the average people. Okay, but there are, there are not any uh, professional secrets in there. Okay, so anyway, that book called Minhajul Abidin, The Way of the Worshippers. So that book. Um, is, you can say, basic translation of the Risala to Tayr. Okay, in that book, he speaks, Imam Ghazali speaks in our language. Okay, as far as I know, that book has been translated. And unfortunately, unfortunately, each time when some book is translated, it will lose some certain, you can say, beauty of it. Okay, so because um, Arabic and English is not the um, equal Okay, because as you know, there are a language, some of the languages are academical language, some of the languages are spiritual language, and some of the languages are, you can say, sound language. Okay, and the uh, English and Arabic are from the, n not from the same direction. Okay, so it will, many, many meanings will be lost when you will uh, translate the uh, Arabic text into the English, as well as the level of the authors will be different, and that will affect also. So, um, the language of Ghazali and his level of understanding will not equal to the language and the understanding of the translator. So, when you will read the translation, so it will have at least about 40% of the understanding of the translator, and only 60% or sometimes even less than that, will be the understanding of the real author, the original author. So the, uh, the English translation of Minhaj al-Abidin now, or even Ihya al din it's not the same book of Imam Ghazali. Okay, so it is the same as, it is the same as, uh, I remember once uh, I was giving example, uh, do you remember the um, uh, Mona Lisa of uh, uh, Leonardo da Vinci? <laughs> Okay, so basically, and then um, they did send it, the copy, one copy, to, um, um, let's say, to um, uh, India. Okay, and some of the artists did add up, do you know that, um, uh, what do they call the uh, bracelets? Do you know, red, brown, different ones, the Indian ones. So Mona Lisa became uh, Mona Lisa Begum, you know. And then it has been sent to Russia. Okay, so then the artists in Russia did put, do you know that uh, 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 eyelashes, which is the, the synthetic ones, as well as the blue things, do you know, they put makeup. So it became Mrs. Mona Lisa, you know. <laughs> okay, so each translator, he will be coming from his own background. Okay, but the pure, crystallic, pure uh, uh, text of Imam Ghazali will, lost its, will lose its test. Okay, but anyway, yet it is uh, the same as like a dead meat for the um, uh, person who is dying. So it is better than nothing. Okay, so if you want to understand this book, Risala to Tayr, then go and read, uh, uh, for example, uh, 20 pages of that book and two lines from here. Because that is the interpretation of what he is writing in there. Okay, so we left the birds actually agreed that they need a leader, they need a king. And then they said, no one is going to uh, convince everyone beside the phoenix. And then he said, وَقَدْ وَجَدُوا الْخَبَرَ عَنْ إِسْتِطَانِهَا فِي مَوَاطِنِ الْغَرْبِ 
because Imam Ghazali is from the uh, east. He's from Iran. So he says that birds actually they found that phoenix exists in the west. Um, <coughs> he's going well? It's okay. No. Uh, but I think my voice is, uh, Marshall, is, uh, is okay? Do we? It's okay? No, but why do we need them to hear us, you know? <laughs> it's better if they do not hear, so we can say our own secrets, you know, the, between the brothers, you know? <clears throat> um, okay, so now I think it's working. I think now it's, now it's okay. Bismillah. No, it's gone. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. But please don't ask me to repeat whatever I said from the beginning. <laughs> um. <coughs> You know, in this path, actually, we need um, two main things. The first is very, very uh, deep hunger. And the second is the authentic leader who will take us. So if we will not have any of them, so, for example, big desire to reach God, but without having the leader who will take us, it may take us and we will end up somewhere in the hell. Okay, for example, we know so many people who try to find the truth by their own brain or by their own understanding. Okay, then it could be called as I am following the brain, the logic, or from another side they can say I am following Quran and Sunnah. But it is incorrect. But Quran and Sunnah is not something that you can put it in into your brain and then it will be speaking by your tongue. Am I right? But it will be filtered by your own brain. So even those brothers who are saying, I'm following Quran and Sunnah, we say you are following your brain. Am I right? Okay, but one is honest, admitting, saying I'm following my brain, and another is not honest, saying I'm following Quran and Sunnah. But both are following their own understanding. Okay, so I say very huge desire to find God, but with the teacher who will take you. Okay, so if one of them two things will be missing, you will never reach God. You will stay wherever you are. Okay, and then question, what is the meaning of reaching God? In the beginning we did say that there is no any physical, um, a, a physical journey towards God. In the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. It could be in one of the misguided groups that you can reach God physically. May, it may take billions of years, but carry on walking and then you will reach Him physically. But we say it is misguided understanding. Okay. Anyway, so then question, what is the meaning of reaching God? Reaching God means, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الصلاة تنها عن الفحشاء والمنكر Am I right? Indeed, salat stops you from the evil and sins. Now, for example, just... Question yourself. You have been praying, some of you, for over 10 years. Did your salat stop you from evil? Each time, whenever you find yourself in front of the sin, you find yourself so weak, so it's so difficult to say no to your desire. Means your salat is not stopping. But Allah never lies, you know, and He said, Inna salat, indeed salat, tanha anil fahsha. It stops you from the evil. Okay, some. Of the Sahaba came to Rasulullah saying, Ya Rasulullah, so and so and person actually steals. Thief. He's a thief and he steals. So then Rasulullah said, uh, Is he the one who prays in the masjid behind me? The Sahabi said, Yes, yes, Ya Rasulullah, he is the one. So then Rasulullah said, Don't worry, his salat will stop him. After a short while, he stopped stealing. 
So now, by the name of God, tell me this. You have been praying for over 10 years. Still you are committing your sins. So there are either one of two options. There is no third one. Either God did lie, or third, second is, either you are not praying. There is no third option. It's not possible that God didn't lie and you are praying, but still you are committing. It's, it's not possible because Allah said, Inna salata, Indeed, salat anil fahsha. It stops the people from the evil, wal munkar, and sins. So if you are still praying and still committing sins, means you are not praying. So now question, what is wrong? We say you are not praying. If you would reach God, you would start praying, you know. You would start praying. And how to know? Because according to Abu Hanifa, I did fulfill all of the conditions. According to Imam Ahmad, I did fulfill all of the conditions. We say answer lies in the next story. One of the mashayikh, one of the awliya of the past, um, said that, so basically he spent a long time praying in the first line, you know, the first tzaf. And then he said once he came too late, so then he couldn't catch the first line, and then he prayed in the second line. And during the length of the salat, he was feeling ashamed. Okay, then after the salat, he realized, and then he repeated all of the salawat that he prayed in the first line. Because if you are ashamed to say, pray in the second row, means you wasn't praying for the sake of God. Something else was pushing you to pray there. And as you know, Allah says, Ana agna shurakai ani shirk. I am the most jealous. I'm the most jealous or most disowning um, personalities from the company, uh, 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 partnership, from the company. Means whatever you do for God as well as something different, Allah says, so all of that is for that second thing, you know. So he was praying in the first line, maybe for the sake of God, as well as because people would be looking at him, means he was not praying. And how did he find, how did he diagnose his own disease? By finding himself being ashamed to pray in the second row. Okay, it is one of the pure people di diagnosing himself. But then... Can you imagine how many diseases you have in your normal salat? For example, إِذَا قَامُوا لِلصَّلَاةِ قَامُوا كُسَالَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the hypocrites. When they will be getting up to pray, they will be doing it laziness. So for example, how do you pray Salat al-Fajr or Salat al-Isha? Can you compare two scenarios? Two stories, you praying Salat al-Fajr or you playing, for example, and it's, for example, Salat al-Isha or Salat al-Fajr now, and you, you, watching Manchester United with Liverpool, or you sitting in front of the food that you love. It's not comparable, am I right? When you're watching, you're more active, more into the, um, into the uh, uh, game. You may shout, you know, saying, goal! I say, it's not Manchester is doing goal to the Liverpool, but Shaitan is go doing goal to you, you know. So then compare that scenario. Compare that scenario wh when you are standing to pray, for example, Salat al-Fajr. And then look into the ayah in which Allah says, إِذَا قَامُوا لِلصَّلَاةِ قَامُوا كُسَالًا When they will get up to pray, they will be lazy for that. So, we may find ourselves yawning, you know, during Salat, okay? We may find ourselves flying somewhere else. So many diseases, or otherwise God never lies. Inna salat tanha. Indeed, Salat stops you. Okay? So, our journey, when we reach God, so whatever Allah says, we find its fruit in our heart and in our limbs, you know? Okay, or another example, another example, uh, some day in the Salat al-Fajr, someone came to pray Salat al-Fajr, it's a very famous story, and then Rasulullah said, Oh Fulan, how are you finding yourself? And you know, Rasulullah as we have our eye in our head, Rasulullah has many different types of sights. One of them, Rasulullah did describe. So Rasulullah can see from the behind as well as from the front. And there is another type of sighting by looking 
Rasulullah s.a.w. can see something that we are unable. So he saw something saying, how do you find yourself? So that Sahabi said, Ya Rasulullah, actually I spent my night praying and submitting, praying for God and asking, begging him. And I've spent whole day being thirsty and hungry seeking the ridha, pleasing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now, as a fruit and as a consequence of what I did apply, of what I did perform, I'm finding like I can see the people of paradise did put on their jewelries and sitting and chatting, enjoying. And I can see that people of the hell in the punishment, you know, and I can see that throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just in front of everyone. Rasulullah Islam said, Arafta, now you know, falzam. So then hold it, bite on it, keep it. I say that when we reach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so that is the fruit of this journey. Okay, or another example, the meaning of again, reaching God is not as some of the brothers say, you know, keep on walking and then physically you will reach God physically. So him physically being physically and you being, so you will meet each other. Okay, we don't mean that. Okay, reaching God means, as Rasulullah said, Arihna biha ya Bilal. Give us enjoyment by praying. Give us the enjoyment by praying. Means, it was the time of uh, Salat. Rasulullah did order him to recite the Adhan and said, Arihna biha ya Bilal. Read the Adhan and give us enjoyment in the Salat, you know. Okay, now you just compare two things. You, in one of the Enjoyments, let's suppose, is permissible. Mubah enjoyment that you do and you are enjoying. You are actually very enjoying, you know. And you inside of Salat. So it is big difference, am I right? So one is the status of the one who didn't reach God yet. So he will not understand the meaning of Rasulullah and saying, give us enjoyment by reciting Adhan, you know. Okay, so that person will never understand. So that is the meaning of reaching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? And how it is done? So it is not done under the guidance of the scholar of fiqh. As well as it is not done under the guidance of the scholar of hadith. As well as it's not done under the guidance of the scholar of boxing. You know? Each single field has got its own people. Okay? As well as boxer cannot, even if it's the top boxer, Muhammad Ali, his opinion in the herbal medicine is not reliable, so that how the herbalist cannot give his opinion. His opinion will be just the opinion of just street people in the boxing. So, journey towards God and the opinion of the faqih in that field will be worthless, you know. As well as the muhaddis or the one who studied in university, top university, Cairo, Medina, Lahore, wherever it is. Because they do not teach them how to make the journey. Okay? They may teach them in terms of different philosophies, different schools of thought, and a couple of masal of Abu Hanifa here, a couple of masal of uh, Imam Ahmad there, and a opinion of a uh, couple of scholars here, there. That's it, you know? Okay? So, but in terms of who can take us towards God, I say it is the man of Allah who did reach already who has taken his journey from the one who did reach already, and that person also has taken his journey from the one who did reach already before him, and that how back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi Okay, and each of them, before giving permission, they said, Araf tafalzam, so you now know what I'm talking about, so keep it now, hold it, bite on it, you know. Okay, but just, now, mashallah, we have a scholars, the greatest top scholar, Shaykh al Hadith and Amiru Min fil Hadith, and he never had a teacher, you know. So, where you think he will take me, you know? He will take me to the hell, you know? Okay, but him getting the widest title of being Shaykh al Hadith. So I say, when it was, it's habit of whom to become a scholar without a teacher? Give me only one name in the history of. Uh, proper Islamic uh, scholars. One scholar becoming scholar with no teacher. Give me only one name. So it is Bid'ah. So he will take us nowhere except to the hell. Okay? And when you will both, you will end up, he will say, welcome. 
to the hell. Okay? Take the deen. العلم دين فانظروا عما تأخذون دينكم. The knowledge is a religion. Knowledge is a religion. Imam Malik says. So look from whom you are taking your religion. Okay, so those people, they never have taken the religion from anyone. Their personal readings, you know. So their level will be the level of anyone who just buys uh, uh, independence, newspapers, and will carry on reading. Definitely he will get some information, you know, because each single newspaper will have some information. Am I right? After 10 years, he will be uh, Sheikh newspapers, you know. Biggest title, but he is unable to take it to God because newspapers never were in the presence of God. So books were never in the presence of God. But it's only the people who has written these books. Okay, so just be aware of that. <clears throat> um, then he says, <sighs> فجمعتهم داعية الشوق وهمة الطلب فصمموا العزم على النهوض إليها والاستظلال بظلها والمثول بفنائها والاستسعاد بخدمتها فتناشدوا وقالوا قوموا إلى الدهر من ليلة نحييها نعم ونسألهم عن بعض أهليها So when they just uh, decided when they just decided to find the king for them so then, you know, nor normally, time to time, how you will decide to make some certain project? Everything starts from questioning and asking each other, you know? So, for example, uh, I will come to you, I will say, oh, you know, these mobile phones, mashallah, is getting really, really good, popular, you know? And then you will say, how much does it cost? I will say, oh, you know, actually, I'm buying it for 10 pounds. Then you will say, oh, in our place, it's 20 pounds. Then, question will come. Why we shouldn't make some business? I know the source of buying it, and you know the source of selling it. So let's do it. And then we will love it. We will put an effort in it, and we'll, we will get its fruit. That's how they came together. They started discussing. One said, I've been told that that phoenix has got the most beautiful voice. It will excite everyone, you know. And the second person will say, I've been told that it has got the feathers with different colors and one color doesn't look like another it will excite you know and that's how you will come to be you will you are going to be excited and then you will decide you are saying no more we are sitting in here let's go let's go to meet let's go to find you know we say the beginning of the path the beginning of the journey is intention and the beginning of the intention is discussion and the beginning of the discussion is the friendship okay Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says kunu ma'as-sadiqeen be with the truth worthy people because you will build a friendship and then you will have good discussion and then you will build up intention and that's how you will start your journey anyone who will start off his journey by having enough fuel what is the fuel it is your desire it is your hunger definitely that person will reach definitely that person will reach hey. so then the thirst of the shawq means missing shawq is when you are missing someone okay so that quality of missing that king it brought them together. So all of them said, actually, we are missing him. Let's go to him. وَهِمَّةُ الطَّلَبِ And also, and also very high desire and huge will brought them all together. فَصَمَّمُ الْعَزْمَ عَلَى النُّهُوضِ إِلَىٰ So then they did decide that we are all going there. We are no more sitting here. Okay. Even if the journey is very difficult, but when you will reach there, you will enjoy. فَصَمَّمُ الْعَزْمَ عَلَى النُّهُوذِ إِلَيْهَا وَالْإِسْتِظْلَالِ بِظِلِّهَا So they decided to go there to sit in the shadow of the palace of that king. وَالْمُثُولِ بِفِنَائِهَا And to be in, in the yard, the front yard, 
of that palace wal istis'ad bi khidmatiha and to be serving to be serving that palace you know um because now alhamdulillah we are talking so now we are more open to understand the uh, philosophy of the people of Tasawuf. So, Khuja Abedullah al Ahrar al Wali, radiallahu anhu, one of the Aqtab of Naqshbandi Tariqah. So, he is um, most likely, uh, most likely, I have to observe the Hanafi brothers, he is Shafi'i scholar, even though he's from Uzbekistan. You know, do you have Shafi'is? Zindabad Shafi'is. Okay, all of you Hanafis are Muta'asib people, you know, we're not talking to you guys. Okay, so then um, what happened? So, he used to forbid his murids to pray tahajjud and to pray nawafil or even to read Quran more than whatever he did ask them. Okay, well definitely if some of you are very beginner, you would say, oh he's then uh, hanky-panky, he's not qutub, but just he's hanky-panky, molvi sab, after our pocket, you know. You know, the philosophy behind that is um, any effort that you do, any salawat that you pray, if it is not only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is not accepted. Rasulullah what did he say? He said, so many people are gaining from, this, from their siyam nothing except the hunger and thirst. Okay? Before you will learn how to make ikhlas, they would stop their murids from practicing, you know? So they would say only the faraid and wajibat. Because faraid, you want, you don't want, you are making it properly, not properly, you are re requested. You have to do it. But any extras, uh, fasting, uh, for example, uh, on Mondays and Thursdays or Ashura, etc., th they would say no. First, learn how to make ikhlas. Okay, there is a procedure of learning the ikhlas. And after, after making you, putting you through that procedure, you would reach God, and then they would say, now practice as much as you want. Okay, the same person, Khuja uh, Abedullah al Harar radiallahu anhu, once said, he said, I used to have a murid, and then he was practicing more than any of my murids. Okay, so he would never miss the first row in the salawat as well as tahajjud and each single day fasting, etc. Okay, then he says, but then once I had to go to journey and he actually came with me. And then he says, when I did take him to a different city, I had to struggle to wake him up to pray Salat al-Fajr. And then he says, then I understood that him being so into the practicing, the reason of that was because he used to eat from the haram income in his own city. Do you know what Rasulullah said in hadith um, which is narrated in Bukhari? It could happen that some Ash'ath, Akbar, do you know the person, dusty, dusty person, in the deserts with old clothes, okay, his hands up saying, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, please accept my du'a. And Allah is not accepting. Why? Because what he's eating is haram and what he's wearing is haram. Okay, and he has been fed by haram. So, Anna yustajabalo. So, how Allah is going to accept it? So, that murid was into all of these worshippings and shaitan was advising him to worship, you know, why? Because shaitan knew his own tricky way, you know. He's eating haram income, so all of his salawat is not accepted. Any of the salawat not accepted. So then let him practice, you know, for the shaitan, so let him practice. And then when he went to the journey to different city, so then that wali person would feed him from his own pocket the halal food. Now we can see his real face. Now his salat is accepted. Now shaitan is concerned to make him to not to pray. But in his own town, shaitan was confident that his food is haram. So not any of his salat are accepted. So shaitan would give him a dawah saying, uh, wake up and pray tahajjud, you know. Okay. So that's how it goes, you know. والاستضلال بظلها والمثول بفنائها والاستسعاد بخدمتها فتناشدوا وقالوا قوموا إلى الدار من ليلة نحييها نعم ونسألهم عن بعض أهليها So it is basically the journey in which is going to be difficult but when we will go and sit under the shadow of the palace then we'll start enjoying 
وإذا الأشواق الكامنة قد برزت من كمين القلوب وزعمت بلسان الطلب فأي نواحي الأرض أبغي وصالكم وأنتم ملوك ما لمقصدكم نحو So then this desire this desire made them to hurry up So the desire which was hidden in the dark corners of the heart it has risen it came up and then it has spoken in the language of practicing and performing means it did came in the reality by struggling and walking towards um, that king وَإِذَا هُمْ بِمُنَادِ الْغَيْبِ يُنَادِي مِنْ وَرَاءِ الْحُجُبِ وَلَا تُلْقُمْ بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَى التَّهْلُكَةِ لَازِمُ أَمَاكِنَكُمْ وَلَا تُفَارِقُ مَسَاكِنَكُمْ فَإِنَّكُمْ إِنْ فَارَقْتُمْ أَوْطَانَكُمْ ضَعَفَتْ أَشْجَانُكُمْ فَدُونَكُمْ وَالتَّعَرُّذَ لِلْبَلَاءِ وَالتَّحَلُّ لِلْفَنَاءِ So then suddenly when they were ready to start off to start the journey suddenly they have heard some voice coming and saying Allah says, do not throw yourself into the destruction. Okay. Just stay wherever you are and do not move. Do not go anywhere. You know, it is the most difficult, the most difficult confusions which is stopping the people from the journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There will be many, 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 many du'at of the evil, giving you a lot of excuses from Quran and Sunnah and from the uh, opinion of the scholars, Mujtahideen, and the rest of the scholars, you know, which looks so delicious, so right. Okay? So, whenever you will go into that journey, it is a journey with a lot and a lot of misunderstandings. But the expert that you are following, if he is a scholar, reliable scholar, then you shouldn't doubt on what he is advising you to do. And there will be many, many people who will be criticizing that way, saying, oh, you know, it is Allah says so and so on. Okay, Rasulullah says so and so on. Imam Abu Hanifa said this, Imam Malik said this. All of that is clashing into what you are doing now so just stay wherever you are because that is misguidance okay you know when you do your istikhara istikhara is your questioning your conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your istikhara was positive about your journey towards God and about this specific shaykh that you want to follow so if your istikhara was positive then why you shouldn't go there? Do you think that Allah will use the Hippocratic way? In your, the conversation with you will say, yes, do it, it is truth. And after that, he will send down ayah saying, don't follow that way because that is wrong. There is only one answer. It is the people who are stopping you from that journey, they are ignorant, they don't know. Or it is the people of the ego. Even though if they know that it is the truth, out of envy or out of selfishness or out of many many other reasons they will give you proofs from authentic texts saying that this journey is the journey of the misguided people okay well it is the same as uh, it's very uh, famous example well, normally I use it in the speech can you imagine that for example I have studied for a long time so if shaitan wants to misguide me, he will never give me a chocolate, saying, don't do that, I will give you chocolate. Because I know that chocolate is nothing. But he will come to me using the authentic texts, you know, to misguide me. Do you understand what I mean? Okay, so this journey, and there are thousands of, the, of highway robbers, you know. And all of them will come in the shape of scholars in the shape of learned people to stop you from that journey. You know, I remember uh, in my childhood, I used to read a lot uh, about these kind of uh, uh, ways. So, um, 
one of the statements, one of the statements actually, by, done by one of the Samarkandi scholars. So he says, "Oh dear son, when you really go into this path, is one thing. But before that, is totally different thing. So what is that? Before you will go into it, you will see thousands of followers of that path." But when you realistically open the door and go into it, you will see no one except yourself and except one person struggling there in the horizon and another is in different end of the world. Because this path has got very few followers. But what about all of them who are, who are claiming? They're just doing nothing, you know. It is their way of getting their income or their fame. Okay, or it is the person whose father was maybe a man of God and it is misguided son of the guided person using the fame and name of the father okay, to look for his income. But he's not related spiritually to his, to his father. Only physical relationship. That's it. Okay, so when you go into this path you will see that there are no one in there. Okay, because of the first two conditions, millions of the murids, they are lost. Either there is no huge desire, himma, alia, is not there, even if there is a teacher. Or there is huge himma, but there is no guided teacher who will take you. So they are dead in the first, even before they have started, they are dead. They died before they have started. And those people who found them too, when they went into it, they have got the shayateen in the shape of the shuyukh who said la tulqu bi aidikum ila tahlika do not kill yourself because it is the path of the misguided people all of them are kuffar all of them are bid'atis because rasulullah never did what they are doing now so the second the people who are left over after two conditions the most of them are dead and killed under this circumstance so they are doubtful their sheikh says, do so on, so on, so on. Straight away, if they are arrogant enough, they will ask, where is the proof? If they are not arrogant, in their mind, they will say, oh, you know, it's not in Quran, and Sunnah, so I will not do this, but I will do whatever I find a proof from Quran and Sunnah. I say, it is the people who are killed, who are dead. So they didn't go into the journey yet. They are dead before they have started the journey. Okay. There is a very famous word of the Sufis which is very badly criticized by Salafi brothers. They say in front of the Sheikh you have to be like a dead body and he will give you the dead body as well as the person when he gives ghusl to the dead body he knows how to do it. So you should let your, you sh you should let your Sheikh to take you to God as he knows. They say it is incorrect. Why? Because there is no blindly following anyone. It is not in our religion. So that's why you, Sheikh has to give a proof for each single thing that he does. I say, why are you not honest with yourself? Why are you a hypocrite? When you go to doctor, okay, and he will write a prescription. Will you ask him, give me, prof, uh, give me proof from Quran and Sunnah, what's the ingredients? Okay, so in here it says uh, lecithin. Where is in Quran? Uh, it says kulu lecithin, sadaqallah. Where, where is it? Does he ask? Never asks. So then, then, why you are so obedient slave there? With ignorant, maybe, you know, a person, who, maybe disbeliever maybe, doctor. And you are so criticizing and so argumentative with man of God when he is huge faqih as well as huge scholar of aqidah. Why, why so? Why are you using uh, strange dual skills? Okay, why you do not weigh everything by the same skill? Allah says, what's in Ubil Qistas al-Mustaqim? Weigh by the true skills. So why do you use two different skills? Okay, when it is a matter of your health or even you want to set up a project okay and then you will go to ask some huge businessman about what brings better income and whatever advice he gives you, you will straight away you you will go go and jump into that project you will never ask where is the proof from quran and sunnah you know there are so, 
such type of uh, brothers who are not who are not um, you can say um, who are not having any problems with going to the interest you know so why you are so relaxed when it is a matter of your body or matter of your pocket and when you, why are you so strict when it is the matter of the scholar following the scholar it is hypocrisy you know okay so the person who actually is practicing uh, whom you have never seen backbiting or slandering or whom you have never seen missing the salawat why you are so doubtful about him and the person who never said that there is God but actually publicly says that actually I don't believe that there is God well there is some strange creature in there created everything so why you're so relaxed with him it's hypocrisy okay uh, and then what about the strange things that shuyukh order I say first of all if you are not scholar then it is not your right to decide what is right and what is wrong okay as well as one of the signs one of the signs after finding the sheikh by your istikhara because istikhara is reply from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so if you found that and reply was about some person and then you found your sheikh doing something wrong you have to admit as it is because Allah did say that he's good so what you see that wrong is according to your own understanding, you know. If you remember the story of Khidr and Musa salam, what happened? Murderer. In which religion murderer was okay? There is no any religion which says, oh, it is so amazing to kill the people, you know. But Khidr did kill. And Allah, you know, when he did reply, when Musa salam said, Ya Allah, is there anyone more knowledgeable than me? So then Allah did reply, there is a slave of ours. So that was the reply to the istikhara. And when he went, so he found him doing some certain things, you know, which Musa alayhi didn't admit, according to his own sharia. Killing, destroying the, uh, the ship, okay, as well as um, uh, straightening the wall for which he could get paid in the Vahiri sharia. Okay, but it didn't match with his sharia, so he said, what are you doing? Okay, so if you have that question, what are you doing? Where is the proof? I say, please do not go to that path. It is not your journey. Why? Because Allah says, Man Anyone who hurts one of my awliya, then I will take revenge from him. I will announce the battle against him. So if you are man of questioning and bad thinking about the people, some of them could be awliya, then do not go to that field leave them doing what they what they are doing but do not get engaged because if he advises you to do something and then you will make bad thought about him saying it's not proper sharia now you are hurting the awliya so allah will take revenge from you so better for you to not to start the journey it is not your journey just sit and watch your manchester united that's what your journey is okay and leave the awliya of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their sons and descendants spiritual sons and descendants who will follow them without asking because he's the awliya of Allah and awliya of Allah will never order for the sin okay so those who did pass the first first condition about finding the the authentic genuine guide as well as huge amount of desire and will they did fail in the next stage what is the next stage the next stage it is says la tulqu bi aydikum ila tahluka so it is ayat and ahadith which say that all of these journeys is incorrect all of these journeys destructive all of these journey is leading to the hell so many murids did uh, many murids were, were affected by this um, stage by this condition okay But then, فَلَمَّا سَمِعُوا نِدَاءَ التَّعَذُّرِ مِنْ 
min janabil jabaruti mazdadu illa shawqan wa qalqan wa tahayyuran wa araqan wa qalu min indi akhirihim walau dawaka kullu tabibi insin bi ghayri kalami layla ma shafaka so then when they did get that warning you know the real ones the real murids when they did get all of these warnings so it didn't increase nothing in them except the desire and thirst of meeting the king Okay. Do you know um, there are people? I will I will give you an example from the uh, physical life, not the spiritual, as we are talking about, but the physical life. There are people of the high desires. Okay. For example, some of the people uh, is into claiming the highest mountains. You know. And then let's suppose that you live next to the Himalaya, and but then you came to the UK, and one of the what do they call them? Alpinist, alpinist. What do they call them? Do you know the, those who? Mountaineer. Mountaineer, yeah. So you m met one of the that type of um, uh, mountaineers who are very, you know, a very high desiring uh, person, and then he said he asked you about Himalaya. So then you started describing the Himalaya, saying. There is no one lives there. It is so cold. It is so um, difficult to claim. So as much as you will try to scare him, that much he will get excited, you know. So the journey, the spiritual journey is the same as the physical journey. There are people are like the physical people. So when you will start scaring and describe the, describing your mountain, Himalaya, the people of low origins, it will scare them, you know, they will say, oh, you know, I'm not going nowhere. I will go to the hills to climb the hill, you know. Or I will go to the, um, do you know, the artificial hills, you know, that's enough for me. So Allah will give them whatever they will choose for themselves. But there are another type of people, very uh, noble people, from the very pure roots, as much as you will scare them, it makes them to be excited more and more and he will say at the end that is my journey okay so the murids are like that you know murids are like that you will scare them saying oh you know if you will backbite once you have to restart your journey from the beginning or if you will lie once you have to restart your journey from the beginning or if you will miss one salat with no excuse you have to restart your journey from the beginning some of them will say oh you know actually I'm doing well I'm okay okay I'm just, uh, I will just go for the Langar Sharif after the Mawlid, okay, well, Tabligh uh, Jama, you know, 40 days of uh, Chilla, okay, and I, I'm doing well, okay. But the people who are very thirsty for the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will make them to be excited even more and more. Because to be slaughtered right under the palace of the queen, it is so poetic, you know. Because there are so many types of deaths. Some of the deaths caused by eating a lot of food. And then stomach will blow up. You will die. Okay. And some of the deaths is caused by you being covered. And you was fighting with the enemy. And you started running. So he did kick your back. And then you died. You know. So low deaths. You know. But the most noble death is when you are slaughtered underneath of the... Uh, uh, queen's uh, palace or the palace of the princess people will never mention the people who are dead who are killed by being kicked on their back but they will write a poems about the lion who has slaughtered who has been slaughtered under the palace of the princess you know so that is my journey try to scare me even more because I want to get excited even more you know that is poetic for me. Even if I'm going to die, my death will be noble death, you know. Inspiring death. It's not the death of the hanky-panky people who are dead by being kicked on their back, you know. Why? Because he was running and he was running away from the enemy and he wasn't fast enough. And he has been shot from the back. Okay. فلما سمعوا نداء التعذر من جناب الجبروت ما ازدادوا إلا شوقا and when they did hear when they did listen to all of these scaring things conditions which is impossible which is impossible to cross 
Mazdadu illa shawqan. It didn't increase nothing, but it did increase their desire to cross that journey. Their desire to cross that journey. And then, qalu min indi akhrim. And all of them did say, walau dawaka kullu tabibi insin. If any of the tabibs and doctors and the herbalists of the human being would try to treat you, by trying any remedies or any tablets, any medicine, besides the word of Layla, he wouldn't be able to treat you. So only meeting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and only his presence will give you treatment. So that desire of reaching God is an illness which never to be cured by anything except by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by his presence. Okay. Do not try to stop him from the journey by giving him different remedies. He will never accept any of them, you know. But only treat him by the word of Layla. Okay. <coughs>